Hello, I'm Jorge Varela for TheButtonSmasher.com and here's my video review of Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix for 3DS. So before I even begin to review the game, I do want to point out the gameplay footage that you are seeing on screen. I want to give credit to where this comes from because this is not my gameplay footage. I do have a 3DS, but um, I actually don't have the means of capturing footage unless you want to see like really bad webcam, you know, footage just looking at the screen. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that. So I went online and I found a YouTube channel called Just One Gamer and the word game Gamer is spelled G-A-M-R, so all one word, just one gamer, go to that YouTube channel, and um, that channel usually tends to have like walkthroughs and like 60 minute videos of um, a lot of brand new games that come out, and so Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix was one of them, so I took footage from that video, uh, that's the one that you're seeing on the screen right now, so I just wanted to give credit and tell you guys where uh, I got the footage from, so if you want to see the original video that has, you know, the whole 65 minutes, you can go ahead and visit that channel and uh, look for that video. Show them some support. But anyway, here we go. Let's review the game. So the short version goes like this. All the Rhythm Heaven games have always been good in my opinion, and this newest installment is no exception. Regardless of the excessive amount of recycled minigames and a couple of strange and unnecessary changes, this is a must-buy for anyone looking for a good rhythm game on the go, especially with its quirky writing and accessible control scheme. Now, if you want me to elaborate and give you a longer version of that, then sit tight and listen up, because here we go. The long version goes like this. I remember a while back when my brother imported a Japanese copy of the original Rhythm Heaven on Game Boy Advance, and have fallen in love with the whole franchise ever since. The quirky writing, along with the enchanting art style and deceptively simple controls, made it for an experience that literally anyone could get into. These are thoughts that still prevail to this day in this newest installment for 3DS, which brings back most of the old minigames, but also introduces some new ones that fit right in with all the others. For the people that don't know what I'm talking about, let me give you a small refresher course. Rhythm Heaven is a series of, obviously, rhythm games that have been released on most Nintendo platforms since the Game Boy Advance. All of the games consist of a collection of really short and simple minigames where you have to press one or two buttons to the beat of the music during a variety of different situations. Many people will tend to make comparisons to WarioWare, but aside from the art style and a couple cameos here and there, it really is nothing like it at all, since it has a much less hectic pace and more catchy melodies involved, rather than WarioWare's microgames that last about as long as a Vine video and don't involve music at all. And basically, that's all you need to know. When talking about Mega Mix specifically, you will see an actual story be implemented for the first time, rather than in the previous games that directly take you to the games, with perhaps some fun and brief lore as a small extra. You meet up with a small pink afro-wearing character named Tibby, who has fallen down from Heaven World. To be able to climb back to the sky, you'll need to visit a variety of different areas, towers, and characters, and give them their flow back. How do you do that? Well, by completing rhythm-based minigames, of course. As mentioned before, all of the rhythm games will be short and sweet, but chock full of charm. From translating an alien speech, airboarding, catching fruit and clapping with cats, to catching coins in the air and karate punching objects to the rhythm, all the games feel totally different and creative, but still very cohesive. Even though they are all different, they all feel like they belong in the same world, which further proves how good the art direction is. On top of all the bright colors and uplifting atmosphere, there is also a solid amount of characters to meet, all with their own weird puns and jokes that only Rhythm Heaven can come up with, such as a man who's in love with donuts, talking dogs that own cafes, and monkeys. Monkeys everywhere! Whenever you're not going insane over the absurd amount of monkeys in this game, you're also gaining coins for every minigame you beat, which can also then be used on challenges that are forced upon you early on. You have to pay more money for easy versions of a challenge, while harder ones are less expensive. I really hope you guys are good at these challenges, by the way, because if you can't beat them and run out of money, you have no choice but to go back to older minigames and make back the coins you need to try again, which I find to be more of a nuisance that completely breaks the flow, no pun intended, of the game, rather than something fun that you can do. I believe these challenges were better served as one of those endless games that you can play on the side, rather than mandatory things that stifle your progress. A great example comes from my personal experience, where I was having a particularly hard time in a challenge where I needed to stop a karate chop from falling on my head and ended up running out of coins. Since this is pretty far into the game, I had to make back a pretty big amount of coins just to try it one more time and fail at it again. Because of this, I got fed up and stopped playing the game for a good long while. Anytime I would pick the game back up, I remember the thing I got stuck on and the annoying, unlikable guards that host it, to which then I turned the game off again to go play something else. Eventually, I did get past that point, but it was a total hassle and a completely pointless waste of time to do so, turning all of those fun minigames into busy work to collect more coins. Unfortunately, this isn't the only thing that got on my nerves after a while. 
Eventually, the game will make announcements saying that you can attempt to make a perfect run of a certain minigame in the challenge room. You can only do these things a couple of times before the challenge closes and you have to wait until another minigame is available. What really gets my pixelated, turnip-eating goat about this is that the game doesn't make it easy for you to play these special challenges in a way that makes sense. If you have played a minigame perfectly before, without actually accepting the challenge, it doesn't count. You don't receive any rewards for that, which I find completely and utterly ridiculous. The game asks you to be perfect, but only in this specific, arbitrary time where it wants you to be perfect. This is made even more infuriating when you realize that these perfect runs, among a couple of other things, is the only way to get flow balls, which you can then use to buy more minigames. All of these minigames happen to be all of my personal favorites from previous games, but I can't buy them, because I have to wait until the game grants me permission to be perfect at a random game, which usually ends up being a game that I either hate, or I'm really bad at, or both. Even if I was competent at them, I only get about two or three tries before the challenge disappears and I have to sit on my butt again and waiting for the game to grant me permission to be good at the rhythm games that I've already played a million times before. Considering how this game is very friendly and lighthearted, it is a very suffocating and almost oppressive part of the game that I can't for the life of me understand why anybody thought it was a good idea. It almost feels aggressive in a way. No matter where I'm at, if I play a mini game perfectly, I should get the proper rewards at the moment that I achieve them, not whenever the game feels like giving it to me whenever. I think about how the challenges are executed and I don't feel welcome. It makes me not want to play the game anymore. One last thing. Even though I love the minigames from previous installations, I hate that the grand majority are recycled minigames from the past, while there's a tiny amount of games that are actually new. Not only are these new minigames different from the old ones, but also more creative and interesting. It doesn't seem to me that the developers have run out of ideas or anything, and I don't mind seeing older games either, but I'm still wondering why there couldn't be a more fair balance of old and new stuff. Even the old minigames keep their original songs and melodies, which make it even more ridiculous. If I was making this game and had to use the same minigames, the least I would have done is create new songs or environments for them, rather than literally copy-pasting exactly the same game onto the 3DS. Even during the second half of the game, you come across more difficult versions of the same games. So it's a recycle of a recycle. I know that this game is called Mega Mix and it's supposed to be like, you know, all the games in one or whatever, but that really, that's no excuse for me. I know that it isn't out of the ordinary to see repeats in Rhythm Heaven, even in the previous games you have like Karate Man 1, Karate Man 2 or whatever, but at this point, like, come on, you know? I know that they can put a bigger effort into these things and they're just not doing it. And if they are, they're putting their effort in all the wrong places, I think. At this point, it seems that I'm really hating on the game, but don't get me wrong, my feelings are quite the contrary. I thoroughly enjoyed this game and it fully delivered on what I expected. But that also doesn't mean that I don't have a laundry list of problems with it. There were a lot of very strange and unnecessary changes made to this game. When I feel that all of that effort could have been used on changing other things or just flat out creating brand new minigames, rather than reusing the majority of the old ones and locking off many others to a busted and irritating challenge system. I'm not saying that it's bad that they have the older minigames. What I am saying though, is that I would really like it if it wasn't the overwhelming majority that is just full of older minigames. Whenever you are not facing those problems, it is still a Rhythm Heaven game through and through. I would not say this is the best game in the series, personally I would give that award to the DS one, but I enjoyed it about as much as all the others, with its typical quirky writing, fun games, and overall bright and inviting feel throughout. If you are already a Rhythm Heaven fan, then you don't need me to tell you to go get this game. However, if this is your first exposure to the series, then there is no better place to start than here, since it has a little bit of everything for everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a like. And of course, you can go to our website, thebuttonsmasher.com. We do news, we do reviews, and if you're a fan of podcasts, then be sure to visit that site because we have a lot of them. All of that content is created by really fun people that love what they do, so we highly appreciate your support.